Pine. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, it's going to be some. Look, look, you've been warned. So, look, look. <laughs> Here I come in three. Look, look, two. Look, look, one. Bang. Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name is Shamari Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Bang! And we have a great show for you this Saturday. Bang, bang, bang. No, oh, hey, this is just... So it's an onboard fest. It's an onboard fest. This is an onboard fest right here. We got six stories today. Five onboardings and then one, uh, one ETF coming up. So, oh yeah, this is going to be a good one. So, uh, you guys know how Saturday works. I might not read every single word of every single story. <laughs> that many stories... Holy, we could be here all night. And the reason the show's so early, it's 3.56 in the afternoon on uh, January 23rd. We've got the big McGregor fight coming up tonight. McGregor. And uh, I will be in no condition to do the show after that. I got buddies coming over to watch that shit, so. I figured let's just get over it. Let's get it over with and uh, head on into our weekend. So, look, story number one. Stellar and Parahub are opening a Singapore to the Philippines. Wait. Yeah, Singapore to Philippines corridor. Remittance. Yes. And not little bullshit remittance like Ripple. Yeah, we were remitting to Australia. What, in only three locations? Nah, nah. This thing, Parahub, has 3,000 locations. <laughs> Bye. And then Algorand and Instamatch. Join a partnership. Bye. We're going to talk about that. All right. And then we got two IOTA stories. So IOTA is going to be used in Asian smart cities. That's the one I promised I was going to read you yesterday. And then IOTA is going to host CBDCs. They're going to host DeFi. And they're going to host distributed exchanges. Bang. All right. And then so, and then the next story is just... Um, it's a rumor, so it's not a real true story. But you guys gave it to me last week, and uh, it seems plausible, so we'll read a little bit. VeChain might onboard DHL. Uh, rumor, rumor. This is a straight rumor. Why are you talking about it then? I know. I don't know why even really. But just because you guys gave it to me, and I figured, well, since all so many of you tweeted it to me and made the effort, I'd at least talk about it. <laughs> And then finally, Valkyrie files for a Bitcoin ETF. Bang, bang, bang. Now you see these ETFs are flying into the SEC now that fucking cock blocker Jay Clayton's gone. <laughs> now motherfuckers are like, oh, Gensler, let's go, let's go. Let's. All right, we'll get there when we get there. We're going to have some fun today. Bang, so let's just go on how we go on. <laughs> bang. Yes. Let's even refresh it. Fuck it. Bang! It refreshes automatic. I don't care. I'm going to press the button myself. I'm in a good mood today. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. I'm... Good mood today. All right. So, price of Bitcoin $32,234. When I left you yesterday, we were at $32,618. So we've gone down, what's that? Um, hold, on, hold on, let me do the math. <laughs> Sorry. Three, wait, $384. So down $384 from yesterday. All right. Negligible, negligible losses. So look, top 10 of the day, brothers. Oh, let me get a sip and all this, daggone. Top 10 of the day, usual suspects. Top 10, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, Polkadot, XRP, uh, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Binance Coin. Bah! Look at Chainlink moving up the, the, right to number seven. Right? I remember last year when we were talking about it when, oh, it made it into number 10, right? Marching its way. Oh, look at the chart. Oh, that, well, that explains it. Okay. All right, anyways, man. Look, look, market moves of the day. Single digits up to single digits down. Uh, 
Well, I guess it's up for chain link here, which is 13% up. All right, but seriously, uh, single is up, single is down. Well, that was here, I suppose. Single is up, single is down. Me chain, come on, dog. Single is up, single is down. I know it's not their fault. It's all supply and demand. Don't don't be silly. Single is up, single is down. Oh, wait, it really is single digits up, single is down. Single is up, single is down too. Single is up, single is down. All right. Let's see who lost money today. If you see anything on here you like, go get it because it is on sale. Let's see who we're working with. Mm. Sales are looking skimpy. All right. Top 10 losers, Voyager Token, Quant, Hedera Hashgraph, Cello, Nano, VeChain, uh, IOST, Kyber Network, Ren, and Bitcoin. Let's see who made money today. Oh, there's some gains here. Top 10 gainers. Oh, there's some gains. Yeah, yeah. All right, top 10 gainers, Qtum, Decentraland. I think some of the brothers were talking about the Decentraland thing the other day or something. All right, top 10 gainers. Qtum, Decentraland, Chainlink, Band Protocol, Thorchain, Curve DAO token, Engine Coin, Ave, The Graph, and Huobi token. All right. Let's see what total mark cap is. Yeah, still under a trillion. All right. Or I should say back under a trillion. All right. Uh, the um, market cap is $941.8 billion. When I left you yesterday, it was $942.8 billion. So we've gone down exactly $1 billion. Look, let's look at 24 hour volume. All right. All right, 24 hour volume is $109.7 billion. When I left yesterday, we were at $156.8 billion. So we've gone down. Uh, what's that? 40, $47.1 billion. All right. All right, let's get on to this marathon of stories I got going. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, let's do this thing. So I'm not going to read every word of every story. I don't think. Well, that's not the plan anyway. We'll see how it turns out. You know how it goes. Get a little fuel in the motherfucker, you know? Shit changes. <laughs> what you thought you were going to do at the beginning of the show. Yeesh. All right. Stellar, Parahub, and Changa. Partner to open Singapore to Philippines Payment Corridor. Yes. There you go. And like I showed you right here. There it is right there. Go, let's go to the side on the left right here. Stellar Lumens based Singapore Philippines Payment Corridor can be used in more than Parahub's 3,000 locations. That's fucking remittance, motherfucker. Not that XRP shit in Australia. Like fucking three, three fucking locations <laughs> in Nowheresville. Yeah, 3,000. So the remittance service will be integrated with the Parahub platform and will offer multi-currency. What does it say? Multi-currency support. All right, so let me get a sip. Bye, and we shall proceed. Yeah, so Stellar's really rocking and rolling. I mean, it's finally, uh, right? Oh, I spilled water on myself. Um, yeah, it's just finally doing successfully what they said they were going to do, right? I mean, companies can say they're going to do this or that, but it depends on whether you're accepted by industry and governments and stuff, right? I mean... It's like I can say I'm going to serve up this chicken, yeah, but if people don't want to eat the chicken, well, yeesh, I'm just there, a guy with a plate full of chicken no one wants to eat. And uh, so Stellar, they've got some chicken. Oh, it looks like people are grubbing up. People are eating. Eating that Stellar on chicken. This is what remittance looks like. 3,000 locations. <laughs> yeah, no, three locations in Australia. Look at Ripple has a 
Ripple has a new hub in Australia. What, with three locations? <laughs> anyway. So look, in December 2020, Parahub joined the Stellar Lumens network. Immediately afterwards, the partners strengthened their cooperation. Lately, they have announced a cooperation with cross-border payment processor and also stellar partner, Changa, to create a payment corridor between Singapore and the Philippines for the benefit of users in that country and the growth of the Stellar Lumens ecosystem. So according to the latest quarterly report of the Stellar Development Foundation for 2020, Parahub, a subsidiary of Union Bank of the Philippines, is one of the 10 largest banks in the country. But through Stellar's network, Parahub will operate the corridor with Chang acting as anchor and sending partner oh and sending partner for transactions between Singapore and Philippines. So, I get it. Parahub's got the locations where you get your remittance. And this company Changa, they're going to be the ones sending the remittance, doing the back end work, just sending the left the stuff. And obviously this is all going to be done over the Stellar network. All right. All right, so let's read it. Stellar Lumens enables low-cost payment corridor in Asia. This way, users will be able to claim remittance in the more than 3,000 Parahub locations throughout the Philippines. 3,000. All right, that, that's remittance. You know, when it covers the whole fucking country. Uh, this country is recognized for the high volume of remittances it processes annually and its preferences for digital payments. Stellar Development Foundation's Vice President of Business Development, Mark Heinen, Heenan, said, Today, Stellar is helping reimagine the world of remittance so they are faster, more affordable, and empower people and businesses with services they need. We're thrilled to work with Parahub to offer an alternative to the traditional system that reduces the friction and costs. All right. So customers will have access to the remittance services and, as he had said, will be able to make low-cost cross-border transactions in conjunction with multi-currency support. The partners emphasize that their cooperation aims to empower users and creating a more accessible financial system by leveraging blockchain technology. Union Bank Senior Vice President and Head of the FinTech Business Group, RV Devera, had this to say about the cooperation. Parahub has been in the remittance industry for more than 20 years, and it's the strategic direction of the group to maximize, or sorry, to maximize their retail network and for Parahub to build the digital remittance platform of the future. It's essential forging strategic partnerships with digital players who share the same drive and passion that we have towards financial inclusion. Well, that's all fancy pants talk. This partnership is a testament that we can use technology and traditional financial services to ensure that no one gets left behind as we foster innovation. So we can make all the money from these people. <laughs> Translation. Uh, for more than 20 years. All right. Anyways. All right. Let's read about it. Fuck it. We're at the end. So for more than 20 years, Parahub was an exclusive platform for who? The biggest remitter in the world. Bye. Western Union. Now its use of blockchain technology through Stellar has allowed the company to move in a new direction. Its main goal is to get more companies to join the remittance platform and expand the reach of its payment corridors. CEO of, per of Parahub's parent company, PetNet, Ian Ocampo said, This partnership with Stellar allows us to stay true to our group purpose of advancing business and communities and allows us to uplift the lives of our Kababayans at these challenging times. All right, well, anyways, Stellar Holders, but an actual remittance corridor that's actually going to be used by, by more than 3,000 locations. That's how you do remittance. <laughs> Congratulations, Stellar Holders. Bang. All right, let's move on. By Algorand enters strategic partnership with Instamatch. Uh, decentralized, let's read the byline. Decentralized crypto platform Algorand to facilitate a $100 billion use case as a result of recent partnership with Instamatch. So, Instamatch, it seems like it's uh, some sort of thing that 
it's a market thing, you know, for traders. <clears throat> I only skimmed through this. I didn't read it deeply, so I'm not going to say too much. But they're going to match, I guess, the trades on Algorand, right? And this is a pretty big company. These guys are moving a lot of money around, so let's check it out. All right. Public decentralized tech platform Algorand eyes a $100 billion use case as it reveals the details of a strategic new partnership with Instamatch. According to Algorand, the partnership with Instamatch, Instamatch is a huge feat and a step in the right directions towards onboarding institutional grade clients. But institutional grade. So the blockchain platform Algorand boasts of a fast blockchain network, as well as its ability to support seamless, safe, and efficient transactions. Instamatch Global, on the other hand, is a digital platform that facilitates short-term trading for inst oh, trading for institutional clients. Right. Nice, nice. According to reports, Instamatch processes transactions worth hundreds of billion... Hold on, let me even bang this, motherfucker. With hundreds of billions of dollars of transactions each quarter. But oh, these guys are rocking and rolling. So its recent partnership with Algorand will see a huge portion of these funds pass through what? The Algorand blockchain. Bye, Algorand holders. All right. All right. So, you know, on Saturday, we don't read every fucking word. That pretty much says it all. You guys get it, right? Uh, these guys give short-term trading for institutional clients, and they're going to do it on Algorand. I mean, there's not much to say, so I'm not going to sit here and just... All right, let's get into some details, though. Let's get into some details. I don't know, man. All right, so let's start right down here. Speaking on the partnership, Daniel Sandmeyer, the CEO of Instamatch, confirmed... The main focus of the partnership to be Islamic banking. So I've taught you, I've shown you about Islamic banking. In the in the Middle East, banking, the Islamic world, you know, they they bank under what's called Sharia law. And in Sharia law, you're not allowed to um, charge interest on a loan. Right? And so they have all these sneaky ways to for their banks to, they give you a loan, like if you want to start a company, they give you the loan. But what they do is, so say for instance, I want to start a, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, whatever, man, a factory to make ashtrays. And I need 10 Gs. Well, what the bank does is they give me the 10 Gs, but instead of charging me interest on that loan, they say, you have to pay us back the, 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 the 10 G's, but how they get around the rule of the Sharia law thing is that they say, well, we own 2% of your company, right? So it's not a loan. I mean, it's not interest, is it? If I'm paying you the 2% I'm owed you, that's not interest. Uh, and that's how you get around the Sharia law stuff. Sharia law is a big, important thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, in the, in the Islamic world. So let's let's get back to this, though. Or let's just get back to what this guy was saying. So, Daniel Sandmeyer, let's start over. The CEO of Instamatch confirmed the main focus of the partnership to be Islamic banking, reg tech, and payments. Also, he added that Instamatch is persuaded of the immense benefits of the partnership will spearhead. Wait, is persuaded of the event? All right. Both partners, according to reports, are also huge supporters of the vision of decentralized and frictionless finance. All right, whatever. So, look. All right, all right. So you guys get it now. So that's the other thing, right? Islamic banking. It's not Islamic banking is not like regular banking. Right? That's why I showed you, you know, how they say all oh, the Jews are all into banking. Yeah, because in in ancient, not ancient, but in the Middle Ages in Europe, Europe used to run under Sharia law. You know, it's the same Bible. It's the same book, right? The first five books of the Bible are the same for the Muslims, the Jews, and the Christians. Yeah, and it says you're not allowed to 
collect interest. And so what they used to do in Europe was they made the Jews be the bankers. And then what they would do to the to the Jews was tax them. So a Jew would have a bank, he'd make, I don't know, 100 grand a year. And then the, the, the king would tax him 90 grand. So the king could say to the Pope, yo, Pope, I'm not making money off banking with loans. It's those nasty Jews that are doing it. I'm just taxing them. And then the Pope would give him, yeah, it's all right, you know, like that shit. Um, yeah, so, well, and so that's how it was in Europe. Obviously, now we have a regular banking system now. But it's still like that in, 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 in the Middle East. Yeah, you're not allowed to collect interest on a loan. It's called usury. I think it's called, is that what it's called? If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong in the comments. But I believe it's called usury. Yeah, that's not, <laughs> that's not halal, you know, in, in the Islamic world. Or that's not kosher in the Jewish world. Or that's not cool in the Christian world. So, uh, yeah, you're not allowed to do that. And so, uh, well, uh, that's how they get around those loopholes of, well, I can't charge you interest. So, how the, like I said, how the, the Islamic world does it is the banks in the Islamic world, they give you the loan for your, your, your ashtray factory, but then they own 2% of your company, right? Uh, which obviously pays back the interest and that, you know, but they get around it. Uh, they're not, they're not in violation of Sharia law. All right, let's move on. Oh, so wait, first of all, though, Algorand Hodlers, bye. Yes, good for you. All right, let's move on. Bye. IOTA, Observer, and Tangle Hub signed partnership to power smart cities in Asia. Oh, yes. So this is the shit I want to see. This is the shit I want to see. You know, IOTA is big over there in Europe and the smart cities and all that. Uh, I want to I want to see them. Like I've told you, I mean, I want to see VeChain too expand out. Right? It seems like they're kind of regional, some of these companies. Sorry, some of these companies, right? Expand out, expand out. And so IOTA is expanding out. You guys all know about the Tangle. And if you don't, well, I'm going to tell you. Tangle is a distributed ledger. Yeah, but it makes blockchains look like little pieces of shit. The Tangle is infinitely scalable. All right? You put IoT devices on it. That's what IOTA wants to do, IoT devices. Yeah, you can put as many as you want. And in fact, the more devices you put on the Tangle, yeah, the faster it actually works. Well, not faster, I guess that's not the way, but more efficient it actually works. Because it's almost instant already. The Tangle is also quantum proof. In a few years from now, we're going to have these things called quantum computers. Oh, yeah. And these miscreants are going to go around hacking everything with those things. <laughs> and, well... The IOTA Tangle is quantum proof. You can't hack it. You could bring out your little fancy quantum computer all you want. It's not going to work, son. It's not going to work. Go look elsewhere. <laughs> all right. And uh, so, um, oh, my gosh. There's so much to say about IOTA. I mean, it's just, let me get a sip. All right, let me just get a sip and we'll read on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they're being used for... So the Tangle is being used in two smart cities already in Europe. Um, well, I mean, these cities are cities, but then they add these nodes, and that makes your dumb city smart, I guess, right? By adding the nodes and shit, uh, the new tech, right, to your city. You're upgrading your city. You're upgrading your city's capabilities, right? And so they're already in a smart city in, uh, in Ireland, and I don't remember the other, I think it's the Czech Republic for some reason. It's what that makes me think about that or what I think about. And they're actually expanding it to five more right now in Europe. Um, yeah, Europe, uh, the European Commission, which is the, uh, what do you call this? The executive branch of the European Union. So the European Commission the head of the European Commission, you could sort of consider like the president of America. I know Europeans, you don't like to hear that shit, but is it not true? When the European Commission passes a law, you in Italy, 
you in France, you in Germany, you all have to comply by that law, don't you? Yeah, we may, may, which makes him your ruler. Well, I don't know about the word ruler, but <laughs> that's the, that's a that's a little rough word right there. Yeah, but the European Commission runs your country, doesn't it? I know, I know, Europe. You don't like to hear it. I like to tell Europeans, look, you're just the United States of Europe. That's it. That's it. Yeah, nothing different than America anymore. You're just the United States of Europe now. We have the United States of America. Now we have the United States of Europe. And when you guys vote for your the head of the European Commission, yeah, that's your president, isn't it? Right? When the European Parliament passes laws, yeah, well, all your countries have to comply, don't they? Yeah, well, who runs the fucking place then? No, I'm not a European. I'm Italian. I'm French. I'm blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, you're still run by the same band of miscreants in Brussels, aren't you? So grow up. You're the European. You're the United States of Europe. And, uh, well, if you're an IOTL hodler, you should be real happy because the executive branch of the European Union is using IOTA for lots of things. Smart cities. 95% of retail transactions are going to be secured on the tangle. And uh, the whole mining industry of all of Europe is going to be on the tangle, the supply chain part of it, all on the tangle. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Bang. So look, I don't to lose. Oh, yeah, bright future ahead. Well, and not only that, but you know that they want to make IOTA a standard. I think I said this yesterday, didn't I? Yeah, you know, like how Bluetooth is in your phone or like how your phone has universal serial bus, USB. Yeah, that's what they want to make it. Like your phone, your, your phone is going to become, is going to come Tangle enabled. Your laptop will be Tangle enabled. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Microsoft, Fujitsu, fuck, a whole bunch of companies. Was it SM Micro something something? The biggest uh, microchip maker in Europe. Um, Bose, right? It's like, uh, Bose, right? Yeah, they're all pushing to make it a, a standard. So it's not like the Tangle. It's oh, sorry. It's not like IOTA are trying to make themselves a standard. Everybody, all these other companies want it to be the standard. They want it to be the standard, you know? So I told you about that back in 2018. Microsoft and Fujitsu said, holy shit, we're going to... Fujitsu said they're putting IOTA in all their IOT devices. Yeah, that was back in 2018. That was three years ago. I'm, uh, yeah, now they really want to standardize it, right? All right, so... Let's check this out. Bye. Oh, yeah, baby, the Tango. It makes blockchains look like your grandma's old 1970 Chevy. <laughs> it's way better. Infinitely scalable. All right, all these blockchains, no scalability. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Hey, uh, the Tango doesn't have any of those problems. All right, so the Auto Foundation has revealed a new cooperation with the South Korean Observer Foundation. Together with its solution partner, Tangle Hub, the partnership will enable them to apply for building smart city projects in South Korea, the Asian region, and Europe. Observer signed the partnership with the aim of tapping overseas markets and bringing the Internet of Things-based ecosystem to major Southeast Asian cities such as Ho Chi Minh City uh, or countries like Singapore. Also, the European market is one of the main objectives for the Observer Foundation. So, they, Observer, the Observer Foundation and IOTA Foundation have partnered. And Observer is going to bring the Tangle into these Asian cities. And thanks to IOTA already being in all those European cities, Observer will have access and exposure to them. So, it's a win-win for both. IOTA wants to expand to Asia, bang. And Observer wants to expand to Europe, bang. Let's rock. Let's, let's rock. So that's a good shit. That's a mutually beneficial um, partnership. So IOTA advances its use cases in Europe 
and Asia. So, you know, like I just said, the European Union uses and is using the tangle all over the place already. But now Asia, that's what I want to see. I want to see. I want to see the tangle come here to America, Dagon. Fuck supply chain. Uh, all that shit. Fuck, this is America, man. It's all supply chain here. <laughs> that's what. Do you know why the American military is the strongest in the world? Yeah, you know why? Yeah, we have bombs and guns and everything. But do you know why America is the strongest military in the world? One word, fuckstick. It's called logistics. Ah, that's the difference. Do you know that the European Union has more men under arms than America does? The Chinese military has way more men in their military than America. But why does America kick ass? It's called logistics. In other words, it's it's enough to have enough people. All right, let me let's preach a little bit. You know, when you have a military, you have a military built to defend your country. Yeah, well, America, we have one to defend it, but we also have one to project that power. And how you project power is through logistics. In other words, if America wants to attack you, all right, we just park an aircraft carrier off your coast. Uh, we send some troops into some country near you. Yeah, and then we march them right up and we just fuck you up. That's called logistics. In other words, getting something from point A to point B, <laughs> like Amazon, baby, that's what makes the American military the best, greatest thing ever, is that they can move a fighting force from point A to point B and attack. Yeah, Europe has a bigger army than America. China has a way bigger army than America. So does India, way bigger army. Yeah, but they can't project power because they don't have the logistics. You know what I mean? America, uh, <laughs> you know, anyway, I'm not, should I? Look, man, just we have the logistics. So if we need to get battle tanks and uh, artillery near your country to, to blow you up, yeah, we can. Other countries can't do that. They have a military that defends. So China has a military, it can defend itself. India has a, a military that can defend itself. Russia has a military that can defend itself. Yeah, America has a military that obviously we can defend ourselves, but also we can bang, go to where you are and fuck you up. Logistics. That's the secret of the American military. Yeah, logistics. <laughs> yeah. They taught us that even when I was in the army. They were like, yeah, it's because we can go wherever the, we can go wherever we want. Other Other countries can't do that. They don't have the transport planes and all that stuff to bring their troops and their equipment with them, right? All right, so there's a little, a little lesson for you, fucker. That's what makes America the best militarily, logistics. Supply chain. All right, so let's move on. IOTA advances its use cases in Europe and Asia. So to get a strong foothold in the region... The partners will integrate IoT devices with advanced exchange and research technology to plan joint business models. The South Korean Observer Foundation will use the IOTA network and infrastructure to make its way into Europe. So, again, uh, I, uh, IOTA is using this, this company, Observer, to get into Asia, and Observer is using IOTA to make its way into Europe. So... All right, so you guys get it. I mean, do we have to, we don't have to read all this. Hold on. All right, let's read this one because it's funny. 7-Eleven. I did not know this. So check this out. Americans, you know what 7-Eleven is. It's that shitty corner store with those hot dogs that they always sell at you, all right? <laughs> Actually, I eat those sometimes. Rarely, but every once in a while when I'm wasted and don't want to cook. I have a 7-Eleven right by my house here. I'll go get a big old hot dog. All right. So all down. So similarly, IOTA's technology will enable it to improve the efficiency of the applications it already has in Southeast Asia. Among these use cases is the international supermarket chain 7-Eleven. Huh. If you're American, did you know that 7-Eleven was international? I actually, I did know they were in Asia, but the way they say it, like they make it sound so huge, right? <laughs> so, and this is the part that I like. 
which will install weather stations in South Korea and Vietnam. IOTA Director of Partners Holger Kohler had the following to say about the cooperation with the Observer Foundation. Oh, and so, whoever you were yesterday in my comments in the YouTube, uh, when I was talking about the uh, the German talk, yes, Donas. Okay, so it is pronounced Dona. So this guy's name is Kotter. Yes, yes. Look, look, my German brothers. Alles klar. And when I come see you, all I want to hear is Twai Bier, Twai Bier bitte. That's all I used to say in German. Twai Bier bitte. Two beers, please. <laughs> you know, I'd be my girlfriend. Twai Bier bitte. All right, my German brothers. Love you guys. All right. So, uh, man, I loved, I loved living in Germany, man. I loved it, loved it, loved it so much. All right. So, all right. So, you guys get it. That's enough. Holy, look at how much more to read. No, nah, no, nah, this is good. So, anyways. Oh, wait. We, we have to read it because it's about smart cities. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Similarly, IOTA's technology will enable to improve efficiency in the applications it already has in Southeast Asia. Wait, we already just read this. So, since the Observer Foundation is committed to collaborate with the IOTA Foundation on projects in South Korea, this commitment will also be reciprocated. Observer Foundation will be introduced to smart city projects in which IOTA plays an important role. Bye! So you see how they, they're feeding off of each other. IOTA is feeding off of Observer Foundation's uh, scope and role in Asia. And uh, Observer Foundation is going to get into the European market through their new partner, IOTA, right? So, right uh, where it says, right? They'll be introduced to the smart cities. Yeah, bang. So, with Tango Hub's experience, we've already started the first test to integrate IOTA into the Observer's environmental stations, securing the data directly at the source. And so... Yeah, this thing, uh, Observer, they have some environmental, we just read it up at the top. It said they were going to, right, 7-Eleven was going <laughs> to, and I guess 7-Eleven is it, right? We're going to install weather stations all over the place. And so they're going to have that data on, on the Tangle. All right. All right, so that's enough, man. So they're going to be in smart cities around Asia. Blah, 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 blah. All right, so there you go. So IOTA hodlers, IOTA's moving to Asia, bang, bang, with a successful thing called Tangle Hub. And they're going to build smart cities all around Asia. All right, let's check out what else IOTA's up to. Bye! IOTA will be able to host CBDCs, DeFi, and decentralized exchanges says dom sheener so yeah yeah so now it's getting into some wild stuff so you know we always read about iota here well whenever they have an onboarding right off like i just did but you notice all their stuff is all that smart city stuff all that internet of things stuff now it looks like wow that's what the guy's saying I mean, this is the founder. Dom Sheener is the founder of IOTA. He's saying, yeah, we're going to rock some CBDCs, some DeFi, and some DEXs, some dis uh, distributed exchanges. So uh, they're growing. They're growing. Um, more and more use cases. More and more use cases. I know the BIS... They're going to do that global uh, CBDC network thing test uh, coming up soon. Well, that's interesting. That's the big of international settlements. All right, well, let's check it out. Bye. IOTA co-founder Dominic Sheener 
and once again took the time to answer some questions from the community via Discord yesterday. One of the core topics she near answered was the IOTA smart contract protocol, ISCP. Smart contracts, right? Like they're getting into that kind of stuff now. Oh, let's see what he says. Actually, I haven't read this article, so I don't know what he says. <laughs> let's see. The IOTA co-founder provided probably the most interesting answer right at the beginning when he said that the ISCP will enable the issuance of central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Bye. And here's him talking right here. He says, yeah, I mean, you'll be able to run a CBDC or stablecoin on top of the IOTA ISCP and tokenized assets. So the ecosystem will be empowered to build whatever. Bye. So that's like the Stellar Network, right? See, that's like the Stellar Network. You can run whatever you want over it. Right? So I like about Stellar. All right. All right, all right. And I guess now Iota. <laughs> yes. I've already liked Iota. I got into Iota just because they're going to do the IoT stuff, Internet of Things stuff. And, well, that's the future. And uh, they're doing the smart city stuff, which needs IoT devices. And, uh, well, the Tango can handle all of that. And so... Yeah, IOTA is going to be, you know, one of the Microsofts of the future. Uh, pretty much. Once all this stuff happens, right? Once 5G really gets rolled out proper and um, uh, Internet of Things really starts happening uh, and smart cities really start, you know, your city actually starts getting really smart. So this is, a, you know, I, IOTA is, it's built for the future. Iota's the future. <laughs> Not the future, but it's going to be a big part of it. I'll tell you that. So, interesting, because some guy, he always does that. He goes, Iota's the future. All right, buddy. You know, it's going to be part of it. All right. Be realistic. All right. Interestingly, Iota was already under discussion in 2018 in relation to the Swedish e-krona. At the time, Sweden's central bank, the Riksbank, uh, put the technical infrastructure for the e-krona out to tender. Around 40 projects had applied to the central bank as part of the tender, with 19 remaining after the initial elimination. Within this selected group were both the IOTA Foundation and IBM, which wanted to provide the technical basis for the CBDC on the basis of, this, of Stellar. Ultimately, however, Ireland-based Accenture was awarded the pilot project. All right. So, IOTA smart contracts offer the most flexible developer environment. So in addition to the statement about CBDCs on IOTA, Sheena admitted that publicly available information around the IOTA smart contract protocol is currently rather scarce. However, this is expected to change as soon as the alpha is ready. According to the current roadmap, this could happen as early as the end of the first quarter of 2021. Bang! So by the end of 2021, they're going to have their, all their smart contract details out there and uh now well, great all right we're gonna move on though like i said i mean so that, that exactly and we're not gonna read the whole thing but that's just another thing that's coming is that iota so this is not really an onboarding or anything this is more of a what iota is planning for the future and uh ah so they're planning the cbdc's DeFi, and decentralized exchanges um, on top of their real core, um, what do you call it? Their core, um, what do you call that? Their core business of Internet of Things. So, bang, I own a hotel house. Yes. yes. All right, let's move on. And then, bang. All right, so this one. Oh, this is that rumor one. All right. So a bunch of you guys sent me this this week. And so, <laughs> hold on. Let me let me expand the, uh, a bunch of you guys sent me this this week. Um, it's a rumor. I don't really like talking about rumors. I like to just talk about, all right, well, when the, when the, when the, uh, when the onboarding happens, it happens. So we're not going to read all of it, but I'll, I will just read a little bit. So, uh, so, 
Hold on, let me read the uh, title. DHL APAC Innovation Center incepts VeChain as a partner as it displays it on its partner wall. So, you all know about APAC. APAC, and if you're new here, you probably don't, but for you who've been here, you know what it is. APAC is a corridor going up and down the Asia Pacific um, from Southeast Asia to Northeast Asia, right? It's the whole Pacific region. It includes Australia. And um, Visa, um, um, VeChain, and there was some other company too, right? That are that are doing this whole um, um, financing for um, trade finance. Trade finance. Holy shit, Shamari, stupid. Trade finance, all up and down the APAC region, all up and down the Asia Pacific, right there, and so. That's the only reason I'm reading this is because they mentioned the word APAC right there. And I know that VeChain is part of APAC. And so this is probably a real story. <laughs> I'm not going to read you bullshit, right? Unconfirmed shit, but. And this isn't confirmed. It isn't. So I'm going to tell you, it's still a rumor. But the fact that you say it this way shows me it's probably real. Okay, so you get why I'm reading this one to you. Well, and plus, I'm reading it to you because, fuck, most of you are V-Chain hodlers. <laughs> my, my, my subscribers, a lot of them own V-Chain, right? Fuck, I got that one guy. He owns 55 million V-Chain. Fuck. Holy fuck. I don't remember what your name is, buddy, but yeah, yeah, you showed me your, your portfolio. I was like, dang, yeah. Oh, this motherfucker, he didn't play around. He knew already, way before I did. All right, so let's move on. While most coins are trying to find solutions for a variety of industries, ha, yeah, exactly. While most of the, uh, let me translate that. Let me translate this sentence right here. While most coins are trying to find solutions for a variety of industries. In other words, you know, a lot of these crypto nerds, they create this shit. Uh, oh, I'm going to make a solution for this and this. They, they create a solution looking for a problem. All right, like Ripple, right? Oh, we're going to move the money from this way to this way. It's so slow the way it is. Oh, well, but in the business world, you don't need money in two to four seconds. You're a solution looking for a problem, buddy. <laughs> you don't need money in that fast. Yeah, we're going to move money. You know, remittance, blah, blah, blah. Well... My mother used to send me when I was a child my, in the in the in the eighties when I was in university, and I'd fuck up my rent or something. My mother would send me money, Western Union. Yeah, I'd be there in fifteen minutes. That's fine. I don't need money in two to four seconds. So a lot of these things are solutions, looking for a problem. So while most coin, most coins are trying to find solutions, in other words, they come up with some idea and then they try to find people to tell them to convince them that they need them. <laughs> Lame. Uh, B chain has its focus set on the bringing blockchain and cryptos to the logistics sector. Now that's a problem that does need a solution. It's a difference. And its hard work and focus seem to have paid off as V chain finds itself on the partner wall of DHL's Asia Pacific Innovation center apic in singapore so vchain thor's d app and dhl partnership could bring blockchain to logistics the news of the partnership with dl dhl shared by sarah naba country manager for singapore at vchain tech uh where she said the dhl center provides an immersive experience to clients by introducing new solutions from both established and co and startups and the V chain would look holy this is sounding like a bunch of garbage. Hold on, let me let me say this again. I mean the way I'm saying it sounds stupid. Hold on. So what she said is that the center provides an immersive experience to clients by introducing new solutions from both established companies and startups and the V chain and V chain would look for collaboration with DHL. All right. A little punctuation there would help. A little comma once in a while. 
So look, this could prove to be really good news for the project, as DHL is one of the biggest names in logistics globally. It would also provide VeChain to grow under DHL's guidance at the Innovative Center and may get a chance to collaborate on a variety of projects in the logistics space. All right, so so since it's a, you know, we're not going to read all this because this is all rumor. I'm not going to sit here reading 20 minutes of rumor, but there it is. Um, we all know that uh, v chain is already part of apac so um and uh through um uh, visa and uh not through but with visa and um i don't know some other fucking company out there and so though but dhl is saying uh they've got their little center here and maybe V Chain will help with it. So, anyway, so that's just rumor. So we're gonna bounce. We're gonna bounce out of that because that's just rumor. But which is not rumor though. The race is on yet again for crypto ETFs. As Valkyrie files was and so now it's now let's yap yap, brother. Let's yap yap a little bit. Look. So you know this fucker. So we have this thing here in America. It's called the SEC. If you're new around these parts, you don't know any better. <laughs> Dumb fuck. Just kidding. I love you guys. But look, we have this thing called the SEC here in America. Dang God. The guy who ran that for the past few years. Motherfucking asshole. His name was Jay Cockblocker Kate Clayton. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He just wouldn't give any ETFs. For anyone for anything <laughs> yeah it was just a blanket no dag on dog there's this one and i know i always complain about it so you, you you old guys you know but if you're new here there's this company called bitwise they applied to be an etf a bitcoin etf they said that they were going to use 10 exchanges for the price discovery of the thing and jay clayton was like well no it could be price manipulation. You're an asshole, buddy. You're an asshole. And so, um, so we have a new, and so I guess why I'm telling you this is we have a new administration here in America. The new president, his name is Joe Biden, and he's appointed, well, obviously new people to head this place called America. <laughs> and part of America is a thing called the SEC. Yes, yes. One of my favorite parts of America is the SEC. <laughs> Well, usually, before Jay Clayton got there. And so, all right, all right, I'm being silly. I'm being a silly dick. All right, let's just get real. And so, but seriously, um, so, you know, we have a new, we have a new administration. Um, Joe Biden is the new president. Uh, and um, so he's appointing um, new leaders to our regulatory bodies, right? SEC, CFTC. We read it yesterday, the OCC, right? They're putting in the Ripple guy. And um, so Gary Gensler, his name is Gary Gensler. He's going to be our SEC guy. And so I guess what I'm saying right here, too, as well as you can see that people are now applying for. <laughs> but yeah, they're applying for ETFs now Yeah, because the new guys here, right? Everybody knew Jay, Jay Clayton, the last SEC chairman. Yeah, that guy was a fucking piece of shit. He wasn't going to give you what you need. But everyone's taking their shots and seeing, maybe we can get this guy. And so these guys are the first to apply for an SE, uh, so for an ETF under the new guy, Jay Clayton. And that, oh, 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 not Jay Clayton, not Jay piece of shit Clayton. Gary Gensler, Gary Gensler, Gary Gensler. Yeah, it's Gary. Gensler. Okay, that's the new guy. All right. And so uh, <laughs> we'll just see how it goes. But the beauty of Gary Gensler is, is that he literally, this man, you know, he was with Charles Schwab and them back in the days. And then Obama picked him to be the chairman of the CFTC, the uh, Commodities Futures Trading Commission. So he's a market guy. Um, And uh, 
He and then after that, you know what he did? He taught blockchain at MIT here in America. What is it called? The Mich- Michigan Institution? I don't know what it's called. Something, something institution of technology. MIT. You all know MIT. That's where our biggest, best nerds come from here in America. That's where they produce them. They pump them out. Pump them out. Now he taught blockchain there. And so the reason to be so happy is because, wow, if he taught blockchain, I'm not saying he's going to be loose and crazy about it, but, you know, in in other words, what I'm saying is he's not just going to grant an ETF if it's a piece of shit. But let me put it this way. He can tell because he taught blockchain whether something is good or not. Whereas Jay Clayton, who's the fuck stick, fuck stick, who didn't know fuck all about fuck all. Well, so there's no talking to that guy, right? All right. You guys get it. Oh, that's how it goes down, man. These regulators. You have two people. Regulators. Bye. And then legislators. Bye. So the politicians and then the regulators. So you got to hope that uh, both of those groups of people come on board, right? All right, so let's let me have a sip and we'll go on. Oh, and I guess so what I'm saying is we have a new guy Gary Gensler. Uh, um he knows what blockchain is about, and uh, I expect um, positive pro distributed ledger technology provider legislation coming out of his SEC. Unlike Jay Clayton, who just, Jay Clayton, what he did was he came in here under Trump. He said, all right. Ethereum and Bitcoin, they're not, they're not, they're not uh, securities, they're commodities. And then he did nothing else. So we've been waiting all this time, right, for what's called regulatory clarity. What are these things? What is a V-chain? Is it a security or not? Right? What is a Monero? Is it a security? Is it a, actually, it wouldn't be a security, it'd be more of a, Cryptocurrency, are you going to treat it as a foreign currency or what? Right? It's called a regulatory clarity is what we've been waiting for. And uh, I guarantee you with this guy, Gary Gensler, wow, we're definitely going to get clarity. Is it going to be pro or, or against? I don't know, but we're going to get our rules under this guy. All right. So now I think I've sort of set the stage, set the scene for people who don't know. I know you guys who've been here, you guys all know, but so here's a new, so now let's read it. The race is on yet again for crypto's ETFs as Valkyrie files registration. So you got the new, you got the new guy in, in, in the SEC. You think, well, that other fuck stick's gone. Let me try my hand with this guy. <laughs> let me, let's see. Let me try my hand with this guy. Right? All right, so let's check it out. So in a move that may give seasoned investors flashbacks to 2018, (laughs) to the bloodbath, what I like to refer to in the crypto world, the cryptocurrency bloodbath of 2018. So in a move that may give seasoned investors flashbacks to 2018, Valkyrie Digital Assets is the latest asset management firm to file a registration with the SEC to form a Bitcoin ETF. Bang! A bid that joins a crowded field of prospective fund managers looking to capitalize on renewed retail interest in cryptocurrencies. Well, actually, I, I don't know about renewed retail interest. I would say a new institutional interest in cryptocurrencies. So, filed on Friday, the Texas-based Family Investment Fund proposed listing the Valkyrie Bitcoin Trust on the New York Stock Exchange. So that means it's going to be on soccer moms and dads 
E-Trade account, in their Charles Schwab account. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. But, so look, if history is any indication, however, the filing's chances of leading to a tradable fund are slim. Yeah, well, that's the history under Jay Clayton. Let's see how it goes under Gary Gensler. During the last Bitcoin bull run, multiple firms attempted to throw their hat into the ring as at least nine entities filed, and we talked about them all here, Bitwise, Winklevoss Kids, Vanek. Uh, what was that other one? Uh, anyway, they're a bunch, man. We, we, we did them all. We did them all here on the show, um, including ETF. Oh, Vanek, there you go, right, and Direxion, as well as Gemini, right, the Winklevoss Kids. Oh, I should have just kept reading on then. Uh, the crypto services firm uh, by the Winklevoss kids. All right. So in a previous interview with Cointelegraph, Cryptoin CEO Donnie Kim, whose firm filed for an ETF in October 2019, said that the SEC has been long hesitant to move forward with the proposals. At this moment in time, the commission is listening and learning about this new asset and that's the that's the key listening and learning yeah well with gary gensler there you don't have to listen and learn yeah he taught blockchain at mit he's the fuck you listen and learn about you from he's the fucker who teaches you about blockchain <laughs> bye <laughs> bye that's the difference all right let's move on and they are holding partner. So partly to understand the consequences of the existing products on the market and partly to look for further guidance under the current political landscape. All right, we're not going to read all this shit. Oh, there's not much. All right, we will read all that. All right. So despite the commission's historic reticence, historic, in other words, Jay Cock Blocker Clayton, who was the last guy, as retail interest in cryptocurrency booms, Fund managers are once again clamoring to be the first to offer an ETF product. Exactly. But retail investors, that's what that ETF is going to bring us. Soccer mom and dad, they are not afraid of investing in ETFs. If blockchain, it's not, not blockchain, what do you call it? Bitcoin shows up in an ETF on their E-Trade account. Well, all right, to them. All right, this is legit. Let's go. Uh... Beautiful thing, beautiful thing, beautiful thing. So on Thursday, January 21st, gold ETF giant Vanek, which is the first company to ever file for a Bitcoin fund, filed for a digital asset ETF. All right, all right, that's bullshit. They're, they're, they're applying for a digital asset ETF, but it's not going to actually hold crypto in it. It's going to be for just other companies. All right, so that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Fuck this. Bye. So here we go. So as you guys know, well, the old school boys who've been here, as we've read, denial after denial after denial. Since 2018, we've read a lot of them. <laughs> all the Winklevoss ones, all the Van Eck ones, all the Bitwise ones. Um, well, we got a new sheriff in town, and his name's uh, Gary Gensler. Fuck, please, daggone. And like I said, though, like, let's get real. I know I'm begging like a bitch, but let's get real. <laughs> the guy taught fucking blockchain at MIT. Come on, we're going to get some goods, all right? So we're going to get some goods. Uh, it's game on, motherfucker. It's game on. And like the guy that, that, that Biden's putting into the OCC, uh, the, the, the Ripple, the ex-Ripple guy, fuck. Not a, he was a Ripple guy. He was an advisor to Ripple. But in other words, what I'm trying to say is our SEC and our OCC now are going to be controlled by men who understand this market, who understand the cryptocurrency space and are favorable to it, are favorable. Um, and so... Uh, let's all hope for the best. Fingers crossed. All right, let's move on. All right, what we got here? Bitab, Tibby News. Valkyrie Digital Assets filed for Bitcoin ETF. 
with the SEC becoming the second company to do so in the last 30 days. That's what I just talked about right here. Bang, Valkyrie. Girls. Yes, Binium. Oh, well, first of all, Binium, let me see the bot. I know, Binium, that's, and that's what I'm talking about. I mean, everyone's putting their, their hat in the ring, and let's see if this guy, the new guy, Gary Gensler, uh, gives us what we need, what we want. All right, let's move on. Oops, hold on. So, bah, there we go. What do we got here? Followed me, all right? R Ramakrishna, Ramakrishna followed me. Cryptocurrency. Uh, so, man, a few words. Good job, buddy, Ramakrishna. Love with the seat of the bag. <laughs> Paul Hood, love with the seat of the bag. Welcome to the party. Clever move. Clever. TV news. And then he's showing something here. Oh, Soldier Boy. Oh, the rapper. Thanks, guys. Bought some BNB, DGB, TRX, Clever, Dab and FDO. Nah, that's a pretty weak portfolio. <laughs> well, there you go, rapper. Have at it. Bang. <laughs> that's a weak. Yeesh. Yeah, that's what I'd say to that guy there. Yeesh. Soldier boy. Yeesh. All right. Airdrop at 007. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Got you wrong, girl. 007. Son of a bitch. Always got to get you. <laughs> Love for the sea, brother. No savior. Bye. Andrew Petrata. Love for the sea, brother. Bye. Thomas. What's this? Thomas QV, the casual guy on Twitter, you know. All right, buddy. Love with the Z with the bang. Share Vizel and Vizel Posse and the Bosco Yaki tribe. V Chain Masters, Hodlers, and Killers. But look at the look at the rest of the portfolio. Yes. Bang. Look, look. Bang. <laughs> Bang. Yes. Love you, Chief. See you, Chief. Bang. Yes. Sue the chief once in a while. The chief. When you have a name like chief, dad God, right? I'm not a chief of anything. I'm just a, yeah, that's just Shamari over there. Motherfucker has to address you as chief. <laughs> that's dope. That's dope. I want you to address me as chief. Wow. Uh, well, I'm not a chief, so don't address me as chief, but I wish I was. That'd be cool. Yes. Hey, John. No, no, it's chief John. <laughs> yeah, hey, you correct the motherfucker. It's Chief John to you, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he laid down the law. All right, let's move on, man. Gut ding, you haven't been around for a while. Love you with the seat with the bang. Robbie Hardaway, love you with the seat with the bang. I know, I'm going to go get your thing that you sent me, man, but fuck, I'm lazy. Sunny B, spy lady, love you, lady, see you, lady. Bang, I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go get it. Just like dad gone. <sighs> All right, but I have to because I, well, she took the effort to send it here. Of course I have to. All right, DP Entertainment. So brother, love brother, see brother. Bye. Lorna, all in downs. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry, girl, all in. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Bye. What else we got? Technically bullish. Yeah, you dag on right, you're bullish. When you got a big old V standing right there, there ain't nothing else with bullish going on. Ha <laughs> ha. Let me see with a bang. Yes. What a big old V. That says it all. Bidium. What are you saying, Bidium? Say Bidium's. What, Bidium? All right, let's see what Bidium's talking about. Singapore exchange to streamline trading processes with blockchain tech. All right, well, good for them. Good for them. Bang. <laughs> all right, anyone else? Well, that's all the miscreants. Look, look, piggy wiggy. What do we got? Stellar, going to offer a new corridor. Boom. Algorand Instant Match Partnership. Boom. Uh, Iota to be used in Asia smart cities. Boom. Iota to hold CVDCs, DeFi, and DEX. Host. 
Bang! V-chain. Whoops. Got some hiccups right there. V-chain to onboard DHL. It's a rumor, but boom, if that's true. And Valkyrie finds for a Bitcoin ETF. Boom. All right. Let's get back to the Death Star. Bang. All right. Bang. There you go. Look. All right. So we had a great show for you today. As usual. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. This is fucking going to take a long time here because we talked about a whole bunch of stories here. What was that? Six of them. Yeesh. Sounds like a double show. All right. So story number one, Stella and Parahub are going to offer a Singapore to Philippines corridor. Bah! Real fucking remittance corridor. 3,000 locations. <laughs> Not like you ripple fucking morons. Hey, we've got a corridor to Australia. What, for three locations? Yeah, this is 3,000 locations across the Philippines. In other words, Philippines is a small country. So you got 3,000 of these locations. Yeah, you got one on every fucking corner. <laughs> you have one on every corner. Fuck, Philippines is about the size of Miami, dang on. Probably bigger. I'm just, I'm just, uh, you know. Uh, that's hyperbole. Obviously not. Obviously not. It's bigger than this, but. So uh, if you're a stellar hodler, which I know many of you are, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Here comes Stellar, man. Stellar's rocking it. Rocking the remittance. They're rocking the... Uh, golly, we've read a bunch of shit lately. Uh, I like that A-coin thing for that A-con whole city. Um, right? And uh, what was it? A bunch of banks wanted to use them uh, to move digital assets around on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me read this. Hold on. Hold on. We got to... Cause there was some good shit. Hold on, hold on. All right. There's. Oh, exactly. Cross border business with Stellar and Velo Labs. But there was something. Ah, oh, that's the one that I liked. Right. Circle to use Stellar for USDC. Oh no, that's not the one. So USDC, blah blah. blah. Where's that one? There was the one about the. Uh... Hold on, hold on. All right, anyways, guys. All right, all right. Let's move on. All right, let's just fucking move on. But anyways, anyways, tell the All right. So, and then, Algorand. Instamatch partnership. So um, that Instamatch thing, you know, it's for institutional um, short-term investments. And I don't know, they're going to run their little platform on Algorand. And so onboarding for Algorand. So Algorand hodlers. Bah! And then IOTA to be used as Asian smart cities. And so in Asian smart cities. And so that was cool. Um, IOTA is going to use, oh, let me look at the name of this fucking company again. Uh, Observer, it was called Observer. They're going to use a company called Observer. And so Observer has footprints in Asia already. IOTA wants to head over there. But then IOTA has footprints all the way in Europe. And Observer wants to head there. So it's a mutually beneficial uh, partnership right there. Um... And it's the and it's, you know, the thing that IOTA was built for, right? For smart cities and well, IoT devices, Internet of Things, right? So, bah. And then this next story is IOTA again, but this time they're going to host CBDCs, DeFi, and distributed exchanges. So they look like they're getting into the kind of uh, whatever, just kind of. Whatever you, I don't know what you, what, however you want to classify it, but just sort of the more sort of uh, 
I don't know what you'd call it. But anyway, they're getting into that area, right? Because, you know, IOTA is Internet of Things, right? That's the whole thing about it. And so to get into this CBDC stuff, these DeFi and DEXs, eh, they're trying to make a little pocket change. Or maybe more than pocket change. They're trying to uh, make some money through these other avenues. So I guess what I'm saying is they're opening up new revenue streams for themselves. And if you're an IOTA hodler, well, it's all about generating revenue. And so these guys are opening up revenue streams. And so, bang. <laughs> bang. All right. And then B-Chain onboards DHL. So that's a rumor. That's a rumor, that DHL thing. I read to you is a rumor, but the only reason I read it is because it was that part. It's part of that APAC thing. And uh, B, I, uh, we read about it here. B-Chain's part of that with Microsoft and I think Visa. Um, so it could come true. Um, that's all. I just feel that that's a, uh, well, I don't feel, I think. Well, man, I think I don't feel. And uh, I just think that that's a, uh, I think it's going to be something going forward. And so, bang, we read it, and that's that. So let's move on. And then Valkyrie files for a Bitcoin ETF. And so, yeah, I so uh, the last uh, SEC chairman, Jay Cockblocker Clayton, he blocked all our ETFs. And it looks like these guys are like saying, okay, well, we now we have a new guy. Obviously, we have a new administration, new thoughts, new, new, you know, new vibes. And uh, let's give it a shot, right? Let's let's file a uh, thing and let's see if we can get her done. And so, there's nothing to say about him because about this really, because Gary Gensler's not even appointed yet. So, well, not uh, sorry, he's appointed by the by Joe Biden. But he's not confirmed yet by the Senate, which is how you need to have it for your cabinet. Uh, I work in your country too, probably. But uh, this looks really good, looks really great, and we'll just obviously I'm gonna just keep our eye on it, and uh, and we'll see if we finally get a fucking Bitcoin ETF around these parts. So look, let me have a drag. On that note. Let shill it and kill it. Bye. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. So subscribe below. And you ladies, back to your husbands. All right. I always forget the ladies part. All right. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Bang. Subscribe below. Press the bell. You get an automatic notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. In the multiverse. Look, my name is Shamar Clark. Love talking money. Bye. Love talking crypto. Bye. This is the favorite time of my day. So look, thanks for having me in your home, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. So subscribe here, press the bell. Also, please press the thumbs up. Let's YouTube know that you liked it. Uh, watch this video over here, Greatest in the Multiverse, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday. So until then, my name is Shamar Clark. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your time together. Enjoy the new administration. Bye, and I will see you all on Tuesday. Counting our money. Bye. Smart Clark. Over and out.